Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, a fantastic afternoon here at SIAC, the last World Cup of 2015, won by the outstanding mayor with Gabrielle Kuna in the saddle. But of course, the sport was provided by one of the best course builders I know in the world, four-star Leopoldo Palacio from Venezuela. And I just thought it'd be opportune time to catch up with yourself, Leopoldo, and just get a feeling for starting with today's event. Were you happy with the way that the horses rode over your testing track? Hey, first, I thank you to Equestrian Channel for this interview. And you do fantastic for the sport to have this in live stream and uh, promote the road to sport even out of Australia. Perfect. And uh, my family look at on, on on America and good. they, they call me was very nice. Yes, good. Answer. And uh, I am very happy with the results. I am I doing this show for already for I many know. years. Yeah. I, 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 more than ten years. Well just to give our viewers some background, you first came to Australia in the year two thousand. No, no, I've been before you 2000. Were... I've been in ah. Australia. Uh, my first time was the early 90s. I come to the Asian Pacific Games okay. in Melbourne. Yeah. I was the technical delegate of the International Equestrian Federation. And after, I'm being contracted for the for the Olympics. That's what I was doing. Three years in advance. Yes, yes. And <laughs> that means in 97, I was already here working and go travel around Australia and working with John Balance yeah. a lot to do all the the, the, the the fences and understand the history of Australia. Yeah. We have the Tiwi bird here, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the original fence yeah. from, from the Olympic and yes. John have some and John do a fantastic job to take care of that fences too. Well, Leopardo, that's what I was thinking. Really, we became to know your name and face from the year 2000 Olympics when you built an exceptionally great Olympic Games, often touted as one of the best ever at the time, so congratulations. But today then, you thought, uh, I'm interested, before we talk about your career, which is f quite fascinating, and your family for that matter, uh, you've got Gabrielle Kuna on an eight-year-old or seven-year-old, depending on which hemisphere you're in, as, as a mayor in Crystalline. Is that combination, in your opinion, worthy of the title of world class? Do, do we? And, and have you seen horses progress through the time that you've been in Australia? I want to tell you something. I don't see in my life many horses of that age that good. Really? I think it's one of the, for that age of horse, mm -hmm. to look at what that mare doing is incredible. Mm -hmm. The quality of this mare is understanding. And the girl, she is a good rider and, and she, she believe on the mayor, mm. and the mayor have a lot of sympathy for her. Mm. And what is what is very nice to see the couple working good. And this is for the sport is really nice. And I believe this couple is continue and and continue improve will be worldwide. Everybody knows. Outstanding we know comments. That, that mayor. The, you know, it's very difficult to say, but. The horses, you never know when they come in lane, they have a problem, yeah. they, they have an accident. That mm. they, they are live animals and always been in a risk, a mm. colic or something. But, yes, of course. But, and, but if nothing happened on this, I am sure that they're going very far in this sport. So it's fair to say that in the time you've been in Australia, since the 90s, but clearly since the year 2000 Olympics, the last 15 years, we are going ahead in our sport in this country. Ah, for sure. And, and I have the privilege here to, for many years, judging the uh, young horses classes. Mm. And I see how developed the breeding in Australia. If you see the horse was third today, mm. born in Australia, yeah. and it's a super horse. Mm -hmm. This is a fantastic, fantastic horse. W good in every country of the world. Mm. And it's breeding here in Australia. Yeah, at the Yalambi um, Stud in WA, yes, amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's amazing horse. Mm -hmm. And we have here, when you see the quality on the young horses classes, and you see the quality of the breeding here, the sport growing a lot. Mm. And, all, and, and in another way, the riders improving a lot. Great. Uh, with better trainers, mm. better, better experience, and Australia, uh, Coming is a country. That you see the results. Great. The results are talking. Australia mm -hmm. in the Olympic of Beijing was mm -hmm. was a was in a very good position, and Australia 
uh, have, if you see horses around the world in the big classes, you see horses from Australia. And just to put your comments in perspective, we're talking to a gentleman that not only has built Olympic Games, you've built Nations Cups, you're with the Southern family, have been the number one man course building at Spruce Meadows in Canada for the last 22 years. Is that right? Yes, yes, yep, yeah, yes. Um, I building, I have the fortune to working for this other family so long and, and I, I believe we are like family yes. and, and Spruce Meadows, I believe, I, I feel like my house. Great. You know, it's, yes. I, when I am there, I am in my house. <laughs> house. It's a little bit like here. Yeah. Uh, uh, for me, mm. I, I always say, Australia give it to me the chance to do my first Olympic and put me in the worldwide and I need to say thanks to Australia all the time. It's not, not that uh, I'm helping Australia, Australia helping me. Mm. <laughs> but give it that chance, it's, it's not easy for a core designer to find a chance to do an Olympic Games. Yeah, and and uh, for me, it's mm. very important. And the, the predination of Calgary is, if it's not the biggest, it's one of the biggest predination every year at yeah. the Grand Prix. Mm. It's the more money uh, class in the world. In the I world. Believe, yeah. Every year before we have one million dollar, and when the other arrive into the million, one million, now mm. we have one million and a half. And maybe when they arrive in, we got two million. <laughs> I don't know. Exactly. And this is what I'm trying to put your comments in line with to get the comments from you first to how you find Australia, but then to, to really emphasize what you've done in your career. You were born to a family that were very much riders. Dad was uh, a rider. Yes, my, and, and the my brothers were pleasure, riders. My rider, my father was a pleasure rider. Mm. But my older brother, we are three brothers. One seven year older than me, and one seven year mm. younger than me. And the three we ride. But my older brother was a fantastic rider, way better rider than me. Uh, to one sixty, <laughs> yes, one meter sixty. And I jump in one sixty yeah. level too. But mm. but he was a super rider. He went. In 1960, yeah. the Grand Prix in the Madison Square Garden in New York uh, was the, one of the most prestigious Grand Prix in America at that time. And uh, uh, we, the, the, he winning a lot of classes. Uh, he was the South American champion twice. He been in Pan American Games, Central American Games, uh, all the games, and been very successful. And 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 but when I born, my father was the president of the Riding Club of Caracas. <laughs> and, and I've been with horses all my life, and I love horses. For for a long time, I I, I, I never been professional rider. I I been an amateur rider, and I been working in construction. But after in the last 20 years, I I only doing uh, uh, mostly core designing and, and coming professional. I never thinking in my life I will live from the horses. <laughs> but it's true to say that you were the Venezuelan Rider of the Year in 1972, the year of the Munich Games. There you go. But I just think it's a fascinating career. So you've built all around the world. So you've built Olympic Games, built Nations Cups. Uh, Arken, have you built Arken? No, no, no. Arken, Arken is only building by two core designers in the last... 26, right. 27 years with Arno Gego, mm. who building for 20 years before was Mickey Brickman, yes. and now is Frank Rottenberger. And is it a little bit the same as Calgary? Calgary was Pamela Carruter for mm. a long time, yes. and after around 15 years, and after five years they changing one to the other, was Pamela tried to retire, mm. and after I come in and I take the place and I've been there for the last 20 years. Yeah. And it's like this, uh, uh, these big shows is very difficult, uh, uh, but the big, really big shows, they don't change in the core designer so much. And then coming up, of course, in Canada, we've got the opportunity with the World Equestrian Games scheduled to be at that venue. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering if there might be an opportunity to, to what, what, one, one of the boxes that you might not have ticked off yet, building at the World Equestrian Games, is there any chance that we might see you building in Canada? Yes, I, 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 I expecting. I am in the race to, to, to building. I don't know. They need the organizing committee night, uh, need to decide it, and I, I, I am in the race. If I, if they give it to me, it's good. If they don't give it to me, I will continue working for the games. But I, uh, I helping the organizing committee for a long time, and we, I, when they come with the idea to do the games there. I was that day with them, and we, I was part of the decision to do the games there. But I working in Bromont, 
like in Spruce Meadows. I work in, in Bromont. Bromont was the venue where was the Olympic in the 76. Yeah. And uh, we, I, I did the project of the renovation of Bromont. Mm. And, and we working and it started renovated and, and now we renovated more. I did the master plan for the for the for the games for all the disciplines that, for the construction and now I working with an architectural office there to mm. to they I am the advisor of them and and I am working a lot there and I am in the race if I have the lucky to have the games I will have the games I don't have the lucky to have the games and God take decisions is is three years from now too well I for one have enjoyed over the last fifteen years watching you come to Australia. It's lovely to hear your comments about the improvement of Australian riders and riders' horses. You're an interesting man. We could talk for hours, but we are about to go and talk with uh, Gabrielle Kuna. But um, I would just like to say on behalf of the Equestrian Channel, thank you for giving us your time. Uh, I'd love to think that you may well get the, the games. Uh, it wouldn't go to a better person. And in the meantime, thank you for sharing your thoughts. Thank you. And I, if I get to the game, I hope to see you there in Vermont. <laughs> and I hope to see you next year again if, if they invite me again. Thank you, Leopoldo. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed his tracks and courses. He's been one of the great characters, but as you see, he hasn't just built a number of classes, he's built Olympic Games, Nations Cups, and today another great afternoon of sport at the World Cup here, the last World Cup of the year at SAIC. So until we now talk to Gabriel Cunard after the break, it's Martin Costello signing off. Mm -hmm.